Welcome, everyone. My name is Dr. Daiichi Shimba. I'm the director of the Hypertension Center here at Columbia University Irving Medical Center. I'm also a professor of medicine, and my area of interest is blood pressure measurement, di hypertension diagnosis, and, uh, and treatment. Today, um, I want to introduce three speakers as part of session 8C, which is also called New and Exciting Developments in Blood Pressure Measurement and Control. So we're going to hear a brief description from Dr. Jurishek on uh, his, his study. And then we're going to hear from Dr. Green, then followed by Dr. Visaria. So Dr. Jurishek, could you tell us about your study? The audience really wants to hear about what you did. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak about our study. So we conducted a uh, ancillary um, study in a uh, vitamin D clinical trial called the STURDY trial that enrolled 688 older adults age 70 and older uh, and was looking uh, primarily at vitamin D dose and falls. Uh, the uh, main results were ultimately null. However, in that study, um, the, uh, as part of the uh, assessment, physical assessments, participants underwent seated orthostatic hypotension assessments, uh, pre-randomization, and then at three months, 12 months and 24 months. And our ancillary study also measured uh, uh, an alternative protocol for orthostatic hypotension in the supine position uh, that were, uh, these assessments were paired with the seated assessments. And ultimately we were able to evaluate changes in physiology comparing the two protocols head to head. Uh, and then to look at the association of orthostatic hypotension diagnosed either by seated or supine protocol in relation to falls uh, the primary outcome of the study, and also uh, orthostatic symptoms. Thank you, Dr. Jurishek. Um, let's move to Dr. Green. Could you tell us about your study and its seminal findings? I'm presenting the BP CHECK study, blood pressures and uh, checks and improving hypertension diagnosis. BP CHECK was a three-arm uh, randomized controlled diagnostic study uh, patients uh, with high blood pressure at their last uh, outpatient visit uh, were um, invited to come in for a screening visit. And if their blood pressure was high and they weren't treated for hypertension, um, then they were randomized to one of three groups, uh, either to uh, return to clinic to have their blood pressure rechecked again, which is a typical approach to diagnosing hypertension, um, and, or to receive, the second group received a home blood pressure monitor and were asked uh, to check their blood pressure um, uh, twice a day for uh, five days. And the third group were, uh, was trained to use a blood pressure, uh, validated blood pressure kiosk that we uh, placed in the clinic or they could use it at a nearby pharmacy. All participants completed their tasks, were reminded to complete their tasks, and then returned uh, after three weeks and wore a 24-hour uh, ambulatory blood pressure monitor overnight. This particular part of the study that I'm presenting today is the acceptability and adherence to those uh, three different methods for diagnosing hypertension. And we found that adherence was quite high for returning to clinic, uh, uh, about 87% uh, returned, and uh, about 91% completed home blood pressure monitoring. Uh, and uh, But the adherence rate was a little bit lower in kiosk with uh, uh, only 68% completing their uh, assignment, which was to return to the kiosk um, uh, on three separate days and measure the blood pressure three times each time. But um, interestingly, most did it at least one time, but uh, a lesser amount did it um, the, the, uh, at least two of the three days. Um, and then in terms of ambulatory monitoring, adherence was quite high as well. 92% um, of individuals completed that. We um, provided surveys to participants at each of the um, research visits. Uh, baseline when they came in and when they came in for their 24-hour monitor testing and the day after and asked them questions about the acceptability of each method. 
and which ones they like best. And overall, uh, the most acceptable method was home blood pressure um, monitoring. And uh, the other, the probably the least um, acceptable compared to the others was ambulatory. And it mainly because it disturbs sleep uh, and work, it was uncomfortable. Um, and uh, those were the primary reasons. In terms of the patient's first choice of what they would prefer to do uh, for hypertension diagnosis, baseline before they actually experienced any of the methods, the predominant choice was home blood pressure. Uh, after completing all the experiences that they had, uh, home blood pressure still dominated in all three groups, but in the group that actually was assigned to home blood pressure monitoring, it went up to 78%. Whereas 24-hour monitoring stayed pretty consistent throughout the visits at about uh, 20 to 30 uh, percent, preferring that. So all told, adherence was high to uh, almost all the methods, but home blood pressure monitoring had good adherence and was the most acceptable to patients for diagnosing hypertension. Thank you. Let's move on to our last uh, speaker. He's just going to summarize the results of his study, Dr. Asaria. Hello. Um, so we looked at gender differences in blood pressure control. Um, this was a cross-sectional analysis of the National Health and Nutrition Examination Surveys from 1999 to 2018. And we were basically interested in knowing, uh, does, does the difference between male and female blood pressure control change with age? And there's some suggestion in prior literature that it does but we wanted to show it with the National Representative Surveys. So we included about 13,000 adults uh, taking prescription medications for hypertension. And what we found was that in uh, younger men, less than 50, had uh, increased odds of uncontrolled hypertension. Whereas uh, for women, after age 70 and above, they actually had higher odds of uncontrolled uh, blood pressure. Um, and we tested different thresholds for blood pressure. So we tried the AHA guidelines, 130 over 80. We saw the same results. 140 over 90, we saw the same results. We even tried 160 over 100, and we saw the same results um, with uh, older women having increased odds of uncontrolled blood pressure. Um, and then we wanted to see whether this uncontrolled blood pressure actually led to increased mortality. And what we showed was that women and men both, uh, if they had uncontrolled hypertension, uh, had higher risk of mortality across all age groups. Um, so in conclusion, uh, what we see here is that older women and younger men have uncontrolled blood pressure. We need to, next steps, in terms of next steps, we need to figure out why a uh, couple possible reasons. Um, there's differences in physiology between men and women that it's becoming more known. Um, women tend to be underrepresented in the clinical trials that have looked at these blood pressure medications that are used. Uh, so that could be a factor. Um, there could be clinical inertia because younger women tend to have lower blood pressure. And so uh, clinicians or patients could be overlooking subtle increases in blood pressure uh, with increasing age. Um, and I'm sure there's a variety of other reasons as well. Um, and that's where we should be targeting our next uh, efforts. Okay, thank you so much. So to our audience, you've heard from three of our speakers, Dr. Jurashek, Dr. Green, Dr. Viseria, about very novel and exciting and informative findings, I think particularly for blood pressure measurement and blood pressure control. So just to remind you, there are uh, not only their talks, but there's also three other talks as part of this oral session. So I invite all of you to actually uh, log in and actually see these sessions online through the American Heart Association Hypertension Cancel website, because I think that you'll be uh, definitely excited about the findings, which I think actually have broad uh, public health implications. Thank you so much.